Welcome back to Violating Community Guidelines with Brittany and Sarah. Sarah. Yeah. What are we talking about today, Cuzzo? Today we're talking about Facetune. Yeah. Um, do you use Facetune? Historically, yes. Me too. Yeah. Yeah, it's mainly to edit out uh, facial hair, but um, <laughs> there's pretty m- and blemishes. I don't know. Sure. There's a lot of texture on my face. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it's hard to look at sometimes. <laughs> yes. Um, I used to do it to a degree that looking back makes me cringe really like sucking in my waist mm-hmm. like thinning out face to slay yeah <laughs> thinning out your jaw mm-hmm. oh it did that all the time yeah sometimes to the point where i was unrecognizable and yeah that's okay yeah i feel that my um my thing was just, you know like portrait mode how it like blurs the background yeah. before that became a thing like i used to like poorly like photoshop like a <laughs> blurry background like it's like cutting <laughs> off like chunks of my hair and I'm like, no one can tell, you yeah. know? It's just, but yeah, I I use Facetune. I haven't used it on my body. I've mm. definitely used it on my face to like, I don't know, there's always like mm. options where you can like spread your eyes apart or like yeah. make your forehead smaller. Yeah, like, oh, I, can't... I tried that, yeah. Really? Yeah, didn't can... look good, by the way. Oh my gosh, one of, uh, one of my favorite like hate comments for us that we've ever gotten jointly was um, Sarah and Brittany have big <laughs> foreheads in the opposite direction. Like Brittany stretched is, in the opposite direction. Brittany is tall and mine is wide. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. You, you guys really keep us humble. Really appreciate that. And that's why we use Facetune. Yeah, that's why f- from here on out, I'm going to Facetune myself. Unreg- I'm going to Tana Mojo myself. Yeah. What an iconic legacy. To have pi- like pioneered the use of Photoshop to that point, that that's what you're known for? To be known for editing your photos mm-hmm. to a point that is comedic. Yeah, well, I mean, I kind of feel something similar to, like, whenever someone zooms in on their face on, like, any social media app, they like, I always get tagged. And sometimes I'll watch Damn. the... Yeah, I know, I'll watch the videos where I'm like, this. what does this have to do with anything I've ever said? And then I realize, like, what they're trying to convey is that, like, on Vine, I used to zoom in on my face, so yeah. this person used it. And I'm like, like you were talking about earlier, like, well, in the car, you guys weren't there. Yeah, you guys remember we were in the car on the way here? Mm-hmm, but you were talking about how, like, millennials like to zoom in on their face, and I was like, yeah, I am a millennial. That's wild. They were like, Sarah would love this. <laughs> <laughs> it's nothing to do with me, but like the zoom. Oh God, I love that effect. God, you know what this reminds me of? I mm-hmm. should tag her. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that, well, there's a lot of interesting angles here that we're going to touch on, you know, of like, where does that, I mean, they're all obvious answers. Where yeah. does that need to alter your appearance come from? Mm-hmm. And why did we take it upon ourselves to do that? What did we hope to accomplish by doing that yeah. um, and posting it? Knowing full well, it's this alternate reality I think a lot of us live in of mm-hmm. like, we curate our identity online and that is somehow supposed to be reflective of who we are in real life yeah. and it's just simply not. Like mm-hmm. me editing my photos to the point where like, I looked like a Fashion Nova model. Yeah. Hey, I don't look like that in real life. <laughs> and people in my life knew that. The people liking that picture yeah. knew that. Yeah. So how embarrassing is that on top of it where it's like, God damn, she edited this to a point that's funny. I know. It's like how um, we talk about like on dating apps, like I've, uh, girls using like multiple like crown filters or something yeah. like that. It's like, I don't think a lot. I don't know why our brain is not taking into account that we have to see these people right. like in real life. And it, you won't look like that. Like one t- I, we commented on it like in a couple of podcasts ago. And this one girl is like, some of us are ugly, Sarah. I'm like, even if you th- see yourself as ugly, you are on a dating app and you will have to see the person. Right. They're going to have to look at you. Yeah. So like it's I don't understand. I don't understand either, but I do. Yeah. I get the need to uh, hide behind Uh something. And whether that is acceptable, you know what I mean? Like, you go on a date, like, she knew. Yeah. I I used to do that, too. Like, all my dating app pictures used to be me with a filter. Mm -hmm. And it's because that's what we want to present. Yeah. When in reality, that's just going to bite you in the ass. Yeah. And men do it, too. Men, men. Photoshop the shit out of their pictures. Yeah. Yeah. They give themselves a, a... 26 inch waist yeah no men like put pictures from 10 years ago and that's a whole other discussion of like Mm -hmm. men just don't have good pictures of them taken because that's gay but the thing is is it's only that they don't have good photos taken they can age so it's not even like i look i mean it could be i look better than you're allowed to age as a man you just don't have someone in your life taking photos of you period Yeah. yeah it's that coupled with um, I've gone on dates with people who I'm sure have said the same thing about me that are a little heavier than, you know, what their pictures uh, put up as a front. 
And for men, it's because they don't have any recent pictures. It's yeah. exactly that. Versus for me, it's me trying to like actually change the shape of my body yeah. in Facetune, which is so gross. We can do a whole other fucking mm-hmm. episode on the societal implications of that. And like, oh, I want to do one on online clothes shopping. Yeah. Like how Fashion Nova and all that, it's like you think you're going to look like that when you buy that? Oh, yeah, dude. I do that with makeup. Like even if like the lighting for like a makeup campaign is perfect, I don't know what my skin color is. Right. So, I mean, I know that it's probably one of the lightest shades, but I'm not going to like buy... Like, I'm not going to buy makeup from the internet and, like, expect it to look like that, you right. know? Like, where I get all my information from on, like, actual, like, if it's right for me is, like, like TikTok or YouTube. Right. Like, when people review it. Like, I have no idea what it, what makeup means in the context on, like, the website. But, yeah, like, yeah. with the, um, with, like, yeah, shopping online, like, they'll use, like, clothespins to, like, keep yeah. the, secure the shirt in place. It's like, that's, but that's not how it fits. Right. That's why you look at the photos to right. see how it fits. Well, and then also smoothing their stomachs and smoothing the cellulite. Yeah. Smoothing all that, like, none of it's fucking real. Yeah. So, anyway. What I think is kind of crazy, sorry, is, like, yeah. so you know, like, how humor is evolving where, like, you kind of, and, like, content creators you like them because they're relatable and they're Mm. clunky and they're messy Mm -hmm. like shouldn't they i wonder when that's gonna affect like beauty people where like you like someone because it's clunky and messy yeah like it's crazy how like beauty is so far behind when it comes to like how social media is evolving yeah that it's still like us i mean i understand the importance of aesthetics but like it's not real yeah and there's so much nuance this conversation because it's like i think that Personally, I'll speak from personal experience. I have lied to myself in the past when it's like, I don't put makeup on for men. I do it for me. Yeah. No, babe, I'm still doing it for men. Like, I'm still doing it to get attention from people. You know, like, it's only recently that I've really started to think that. Yeah. It's like, makeup is so fun. I, I enjoy the radical, radically feminine process of taking your time with makeup and gluing little gems on your face and all that. Like Mm -hmm. I've just recently come to enjoy that as what it is instead of, okay, the end product I'm using to get attention from men. Yeah. Period. Yeah. It's like that mixed with, I, I don't know. Like as a, as a woman online, I just feel the need to be beautiful and I'm still grappling with that yeah no we don't owe beauty i I totally get that we don't owe beauty but it's also like the comments can get to you like if your job our jobs is filming our face yeah like and we we're every society still believes that a lot of like a woman's worth is in her age and like her looks like we can be we can be pushing the like we can be accepting of ourselves and understand the male gaze, but we also simultaneously still exist in a society where, like, right. that is what a lot of people are unconsciously, like, judging you for. Right. And so, like, that, of course, it's going to affect you, you know, in some sort of way. Yeah. I think it's just, it's, yeah, that's what I was trying to get at earlier. Yeah. You put it, into, that was perfectly said, mm-hmm. of, you know, we can try to... Uh, it's this whole kind of journey that I feel like I'm on. It's it, and the catalyst was TikTok, honestly, of realizing that yes, there's so being a woman is so multifaceted, and mm-hmm. you know, especially as I don't want to speak for you, but like mm-hmm. I would love to hear your okay, experience bitch. with <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> as a non-binary person. Okay. You know, like how do you let both beauty standards affect you? Or mm-hmm. I mean, I'm still thinking about it in a binary, but like yeah, I, I know that. I will never truly be able to abandon the idea of what I think I should look like. Yeah. So people will be nice to me. Mm -hmm. So people will give me special treatment. You know what I mean? Like, I can't go out looking like this and expect to... But this is how I look. Be treated like a human being. Be treated nice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, not that, but you know what I mean? Like, super, super pretty girls. Mm -hmm. It's pretty privileged. That's what I'm describing. Yeah. Like, I know that... And this isn't, I'm not shitting on myself, but like, just this is my face. This is how I look. This is me. I love myself. But there, I don't reach that level of getting into a club for free. Yeah. You know? And I think that that is, when you finally accept that Mm -hmm. in not a self deprecating way, I found peace. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't even, the non binary thing, I'm trying to think of, I understand, like, you know, Like using like makeup created to like appear to men like you use makeup to like look cute to men versus like you genuinely enjoy makeup Mm -hmm. in a similar way. um, 
my attachment to like gender, my dis, like my, I have not really like a connection with uh, womanhood much anymore. Mm -hmm. And that's mainly because of like the uh, neurodivergency where like I've always felt like somewhat detached from other people or like society. And what I could do to like feel some sort of attachment to others was like, get pretty or like be thin and so like no matter how weird I was or like the fact that if I had like a weird freak out or like sensory sort of issue people uh, uh, pre were like you're pretty enough that you're like still accepted by us right and that's where like you'll see like a lot of like the prettier you are the weirder you can be yeah because like people want to be around you and so I thought if I'm prettier and I'm like so that's why I use makeup still like as much to this day also the fact that I do like makeup in general, mm -hmm. it's a way to like feel connected to other people. Yeah. I feel very detached from reality and like Gee. womanhood and manhood, yes. Yeah, it's such a weird surface level thing. Yeah. Like the idea of having to put on makeup to be treated with <laughs> respect. <laughs> that is crazy. I mean, like you think about it, like if a ugly guy comes up on the street and is like, can I buy you a drink? You're like, oh, listen, I'm sober. Or yeah. if you like a hot guy comes up to buy you a drink, you're like, but I mean, I could start tomorrow, like start. Right. Yeah. Like I could sober up tomorrow. Like it's so it looks really do affect like how well we treat people. Yes. And everyone's going to be like, you ever heard of racism and sexism? <laughs> And we're like, that's yeah, a different episode. Yeah. <laughs> Would you believe that how you look affects how people treat you? Yes. Are you serious? <laughs> oh, I know. Damn. Hi, guys. Today's video is sponsored by our friends at SeatGeek. If you don't already know, SeatGeek is a ticketing app that makes buying tickets to live events super simple. Simple like me. We've got the app on our phones and is by far and away the best way to buy tickets. Whether it's concerts, baseball, football, festivals, or more, SeatGeek puts tickets from all over the web in one place to make buying simple. With so many amazing concerts happening right now, you're not going to want to miss out. I'm talking Bad Bunny, The Weeknd, Lady Gaga, Pitbull, Harry Styles, and so much more. That was pretty intense. I'm going to see Lady Gaga September 10th at the Dodger Stadium, and I'm really, really excited. It's my first official concert. I have been to festivals, but this is like a concert concert. I'm excited. SeatGeek wants to make sure you're getting a good deal. So when you're on the app, look for the green dots. Green means good deal, red means bad. Don't worry, we've got the hookup. Use code VCG for $20 off tickets at SeatGeek. That's $20 off your first purchase with promo code VCG. Make sure you click the link in the description to download the app. Has anyone else been conditioned to show up to the airport like four hours early and then you just sit there completely bored at the gates? I know I have, but thankfully now I have a go-to game that rips me from my chronic boredom. Because life's too short for a day without fun. Get a thrill whenever you need it with Slotomania, the world's number one free slots game. You'll have endless excitement at your fingertips with 170 free-to-play slot games, huge jackpots, an interactive community, and a million free coins. It's the perfect escape for your daily routine. What I personally love is the huge jackpot wins. When I'm sitting at gate A34 for four hours, it's nice to have one or two jackpot wins, if you know what I mean. With Slotomania, you get one million free coins when you download Slotomania to kickstart the fun. There's nothing more exhilarating than huge jackpots, special prizes, and free coin rewards every day. Slotomania makes every day fantastic with engaging graphics and realistic sound effects. With added perks like free spins and free coins, there's always something unexpected waiting. You also get the thrill of slots from the palm of your hand. Hundreds of original Vegas-style and video slot machines ready to play wherever you are. It's like a Vegas vacation without the luggage. But I do have the luggage because I'm at the airport. Start having fun right away. No insider knowledge or strategies required. New features added daily, including fun mini games and your very own pet cheetah, Aurora. Join the biggest community of slot lovers in the world. Interact with fellow players and form cooperative slot clans with new friends or enter electrifying live tournaments. Become a VIP member to get your own personal account manager. Connect with millions of other slot fans on the Slotomania Facebook page, the biggest slots community in the world. Share your wins with the world, get love and feedback from other members 24-7. When your day is feeling stale, just ask, what will today spin? If you're 21 or older, you can join millions of players around the world. Download Slotomania, the number one free slots game, on the App Store or Google Play Store and get 1 million free coins. That's Slotomania on the App Store or Google Play Store for 1 million free coins. But all of that lends itself to <laughs> the topic. Face tune. Face tune. I feel like we need to get all that out of the way because that has everything to do with this. Is yeah. What is the intrinsic need to edit your photos to post them online? Yeah. And I think, okay, actually, I'm not done. <laughs> you talked earlier about um, this trend, this, this 
you know, what's it called? Cross section. Yeah. Of intersection. Yes. This time in the internet history where being relatable and being, you know, not put together and like, this is just me. Yeah. I benefit from that. Like I will be very hyper self-aware. That is the category that I put myself in. And I've started to see TikToks that make fun of that. And I'm here for it. Where it's being relatable? Being relatable, but a forced relatability. Yeah. Where it's like, guys, I'm just a mess today. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Like, or chaotic, get ready with me. Yeah. That shit where it's like, you are to a certain extent forcing it. And I think that is so fucking weird. Yeah. Because historically we've seen, especially I'll speak about beauty YouTubers. You have to be that Manny MUA fucking yeah. redacted Jeffree Star like with a green screen and with perfect lighting and with yeah. giving like an articulate review and knowing what you're doing and like that was so yeah you had to do that yeah and now it's like we're abandoning that for chaotic get ready with me like yeah. this is ill me make a bag so gross like yeah. that sort of stuff what's next do we have a return to the formality of yeah. a tutorial it's cool to see these waves, but also how people make fun of, yeah. you know, like being relatable. Everyone should be relatable. That's what brands want. Yeah. That's what the audience wants. That's what fucking I want to see. You know, I don't want to see someone put together. That's going to change probably in six months. A yeah. Year. Well, I mean, dude, it's like we're cycling. Like sincerity. We were talking about this in the car. You guys should have mm-hmm. been there. Guys, seriously, we had a good conversation. We like <laughs> we had such a great conversation. But like people are afraid, more afraid of like being sincere nowadays. I want to talk about the evolution of like cringe. Mm-hmm. We're like in 2016, it took a lot to, I mean, it didn't take a lot to be considered cringy, but like it rarely was someone like roasted alive for being cringy. Yeah. Now it seems like you can post something that's a little bit too sincere or like a little bit off the mark on like TikTok and everyone just decimates you. I'll jump on you, yeah. Yeah, so it's like, um, what were we talking about? So like, you're talking about like forced relatability yeah. um, and then also it's cycling through like making fun of like people who are trying to be relatable. It's just like this cycle of like social media like quickening up. Like, yep. um, not quickening, like yeah, quickening. Yeah. So like the thing is, is I feel like now there's gonna be, there, like how micro trends are like cycling so quickly that there's not gonna be micro trends where like everyone is doing everything all at once, not because they're behind or ahead, but because it's like, just a constant cycle where, like, if it becomes unpopular, it is gonna, now going to be popular. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, everything is becoming popular and not popular at the same time. Yeah, it's just magnified. Yeah. Versus, like, even two, three years ago, early TikTok, you know, it was, like, alt versus straight TikTok. Yeah. And it was, like, oh, you're not on alt TikTok. Yeah, yeah. you would be. You're on straight TikTok. That sort of... You know, you're not you're not in with the cool kids. Yeah. That's the mentality of it all. That's slowly fading as well, which yeah. I think is what you're getting at of like, it's all just happening so fucking fast. Yeah. Where this is cool, then it's out. But this is cool ironically, but then it's unironic. We actually like him now. No, 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 no. Yeah. Stanley has a good uh it's called circle theory. We've talked about it before, yeah. where this thing is cool, then it becomes uh uncool, then it becomes ironically cool to like it, then people just like it. It yeah. was Charlie D'Amelio, Alex Weber, like all of these fucking people that it's cringe and then it's not and then it's like you better like them yeah it's so fucking weird how quick it happens though. yeah and i think wait when i think about like the first time i ever saw like a actual shift in like irony or like how like like the cool is like no longer a thing yeah this is actually a traditional media thing you know like in um 21 jump street when like uh, Jonah Hill and then Chris, like Channing Tatum have to go back to high school, and yep. like it, the shows like how when they went to high school, like it was totally normal for like people to, like bully people for like being like dumb or like knocking their books out of their yeah. hand. Then like flash like ten years forward, and they like pretend to be high schoolers again, and now like Channing Tatum tries to like make fun of someone, and then like the popular crowd is like that's a, like that's a weird thing to do. Yeah, why would you do that? Yeah, like why would you, like that? Why would anyone do that? And then also flash forward to like Booksmart, where um you know these two girls who are like nerdy who. Like we never partied, um, you know, when we're going to these great schools. And then she talks to the popular kids who are like also going to great schools. And it's like a shock to her because it's like it's no longer I would say it's honestly no longer cool to be uncool. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's, it's, it's no longer cool to be cool. Like, do you know yeah. or like not care? Yeah. And so now it's crazy, like how you see it cycling and like, yeah, it's just, yes, I'm trying to like connect points. Yeah. Yes. No, and it's very accurate. Again, what we talked about in the car. You guys seriously Oh my god. Missed you should have rode with us ride. here. Yeah, seriously, you missed oh. a good one. Mm-hmm. How's it only been 12 minutes? Oh shit. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> I feel like I'm high. Yeah. 
Um, <laughs> great bit, by the way, when you're high and you're like, it's been two minutes. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> what was I going to say? But anyway, the sun's going down. We got to go home. Anyway, guys, thank <laughs> you so much for listening. Um, what were we just talking about? Dude, how the circle theory. Circle theory. And it cycle, trend cycles so quickly. The thing is, is like, what is cool anymore? Like, actually, I think cool, like, irony is cool. You can't, like, be sincere. Being sincere is uncool, but also cool at the same time. Yeah. It's just finding that balance. It is. And it's, (laughs) it's how do you exist as a personality that people want to emulate? Yeah. In such a, a volatile time. Yeah. You know, like, how do, and I always bring it back to, fucking Emma Chamberlain because she's the blueprint at least personally speaking for me of just like being a personality that you want to watch yeah you want to watch what she's doing because she's dynamic and she's fun and she's successful and she's paved her own path it's like where do those people fit in yeah through all this you know Mm -hmm. where it's oh that's ironic no you have to like this ironically and then you know like well don't be a bully and then what happens when sincerity comes back in yeah. and everyone's being really heartfelt online mm-hmm. and then you're the irony poisoned one that's fucking, you know, like you can't keep up. Yeah. Like, what are you? Uh, you're not human. Yeah. Have empathy. <laughs> I'm an empath. I'm an empath. It's like, it's fucking exhausting to try to predict mm-hmm. where the internet will go, especially like you said, things are speeding up Yeah, and it's magnified to this level. That's like, I sometimes find it hard to keep up. Yeah. Well, I think also every single type of content like ha- goes through its own evolution. Like what's like relatable like 20 th- weirdly enough, what's relatable like 5 years ago is not relatable now. No. Like so like you see like Shane Dawson types who are it's relatable for like people to complain about their money. Sure. Like people go online they're like I've you know lost my car today and I don't have a job and that's like everyone's like that's relatable. How and so Shane Dawson types are like I am just, I'm not as rich as Jeffree Star. You are complaining about money, but you are not hitting the mark when it comes to relatability. Yeah, so you're like a millionaire, by the way. Yeah. So like it is a re- relatable topic, <clears throat> but you need to like evolve. And that's yeah. um. Oh my God, Jesus! What were we talking about? You were talking about um, the forced <laughs> relatability. How yes. like people are like now their um, makeup artists are not going in studios, and now they're just like you know this is what I found in like my you know sixth grade like summer like makeup bag. Let's right. just do it in like poor <laughs> right. lighting. Right. It's like people can't, I think people are getting smarter, honestly. You can tell when someone's forcing something versus yeah. if they're actually like that. Yeah. You know, yes. But that doesn't exempt you from being made fun of. It doesn't exempt you. It's just like more like understandable. Like people see you and they're like, this is you to your core. Yeah. You know, this is relatable. But like those makeup gurus also since like relatability and personality is maybe not their specialty. It's mm. more like the beauty itself. It's hard for them. It's going to be hard to do. Yes. Be relatable. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's also this weird thing of okay those people who to their core aren't relatable yeah nothing about them is remotely yeah you know entertaining they may have a skill in a certain area but it's not to the point where it's like god i want to see more of them it's the um what's his fucking name brent rivera types yeah where it's like you're 26 and you're talking about when you're late for school yeah i'd be like oh uh, yeah it's that it's like yeah. Who is still engaging with that content? Yeah. And it's kids. Yeah, it is. It's nine-year-olds. The thing is, is you can pretend... The thing is, you can't... I can do a sketch right now of, like, I'm in fifth grade. But, like... (laughs) Uh, and so I can, I can, it would be funny and adults could watch it, but I think like the way that he acts, it's like, I don't know how to explain it. He's not actually in a character. He's just immature. Yes. And that's what's showing where like, it's, you know, when mom yells at you, I could do a when mom yells at you thing and it would be funny. So I don't, there's just something about him that's just so bad. It's because yours is geared for the point of comedy to people your age. I'm try- Yeah. He's trying to connect with children. He's trying to connect with kids in an authentic way. To him, way. Yes. You know, when your mom busts in your room, you're 28, dude. If she's she's breaking and entering at this point. She is in your home that you have a mortgage for. <laughs> it's just like, I, I find it so interesting. Different creators who, because I always say this, it's the Wild West. We're all just trying to figure out how to do this. Yeah. You know, how to do internet stuff without going to prison for tax evasion and yeah. without being canceled. And there are people like the Brent Rivera's and Logan Paul's where it's like, they found their fucking audience. Yeah. And for whatever reason, they are loyal. And Logan, I think is a different 
type because he's managed to evolve in whatever way. Bro Rivera, not at all. No. And he still makes fucking millions of dollars, I think. <laughs> yes. I don't know. What's he doing? Kissing his sister? You seen that shit? <laughs> yes. What's up with that, man? So, um, yes, but we should also circle back to general photo manipulation. Yes, so back to Facetune, by the way. You were literally like, this This research is 12 pages long. We got to, like, <laughs> edit it. All right. So photograph manipulation involves the transformation <laughs> or altercation of a photo- photograph using various methods and techniques to achieve desired results. Some photograph manipulations are considered to be skillful artwork, while others are considered to be unethical practices, especially when used to deceive the public. Or set a beauty standard that is not real. Or sell something. Yes. Yeah. Other examples include being used for political propaganda. <laughs> you make Donald waist like waist like a little bit smaller, <laughs> um, or to improve the appearance of a product or person, or simply as entertainment or practical jokes. Yassified Joe Biden. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is propaganda. American Looks like propaganda. He has like a BBL, like um, makeup by Ariel and like <laughs> Kylie Jenner and you know Joe Biden. <laughs> That's my president. Mm, retouching human subjects. A common form of photographic manipulation, particularly in advertising, fashion, and glamour. Photography includes edits intended to enhance the appearance of the subject. Yeah. Common transformations include smoothing skin texture, erasing scars, pimples, and other skin blemishes, uh, slimming the subject's body, and erasing wrinkles and folds. <laughs> hey, I'll show you a fold. <laughs> There's just, just get rid of the folds underneath my boobs. So it's just like lump nipple. You know what I used to hate? This part of your armpit. Oh, yeah, like where the boob goes into the armpit. But, like, it's literally just the skin that you need to be able to raise your arms above your head. <laughs> like, that's all that is right there. So it's, fly like a bat across a cave. Yes, yeah, so to expand your wingspan <laughs> yes. and be able to soar. <laughs> yeah. I literally used to hate that part of me. And yeah. now I'm like, couldn't raise my arms without it. Yeah. So that's cool. Yeah, I mean, I tried to, like, when the I tried to, when I was younger, shove, like, the armpit fat into, like, my bra. <laughs> So it, it was like more boob, and it just like it's clearly not boob. It's clearly just pit skin. <laughs> it's just yes, my pit skin. You go to Victoria's Secret, it's like how big is my pit skin? <laughs> it's hairy. <laughs> Dude, my um my armpit hair grows like weirdly far, like towards my chest. Oh. Like so, like I could like put my arm down and you see it. <laughs> You've got chest hair. <laughs> just, just your just pit hair. Ass. <laughs> it's like shape no but i started to get it like lasered off so it's starting to go away Slay. my kids are gonna be like what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> i'm not gonna have my kids the sperm donor was literally sasquatch yes. <laughs> we found him um so the use in fashion the mo- the photo manipulation industry has often been accused of promoting or inciting a distorted or unrealistic image of self most specifically in younger people period mm-hmm. the, the world, world- Ooh, there we go. I'll take it. Jinx. The world of glamour photography is one specific industry that has been heavily involved with the use of photo manipulation, what c- many consider to be a concerning element as many people look up to celebrities in search of embodying the ideal figure. When those accounts went viral of like real celebrity skin or yeah. whatever, where it was like Kendall Jenner in a campaign and then Kendall Jenner on the red carpet with the f- nasty flash in her face because yeah. like red carpet photos are so unforgiving that show like her acne texture. Yeah. When I saw that for the first time, I was like, oh shit. Yeah. When I saw the fine lines on JLo's face, I was like, oh my God. Because I had never in my <laughs> She's life- 50. But, but still, <laughs> mm-hmm. you couldn't tell that. Yeah. That's her, her whole fucking thing. That's her whole act is that like, JLo looks great for that thing. Yeah. It's like that- well, this because she's a medical anomaly. Like she yeah. has had so much work done. Everyone's like, how'd you do it? I'm like, don't, you, how'd she do it? Exactly. Like she, this is what she does. Yeah. Look young. That's her brand. She can look young better than she can sing or dance. Oh dude, you know what else that we need to talk about? Fucking celebrity skincare lines. Oh yeah. Dude, KKW Beauty, JLo just came out with her own. Um, and just also celebrity endorsement in general, which is what, what we do. Yeah. But. Oh, I'd love to do a whole thing on that of how honest it is. And like, it's simply when it's something like JLo, who is famous for looking young. Yeah. She beat the odds, right? Yes. She's almost fucking fi- late 50s <laughs> and she looks better than I do. Yes. Her products that she developed in some lab in fucking Studio City, California, is not going to make you look like JLo. Yeah. I also on TikTok I'm starting to see, thank God, these trends that are like, dude, skincare can help you yeah. maintain, you know, whatever level your skin is at right now. And sure, keeping it hydrated and all that is important. 
But if you want to look like a celebrity, you have to get facials. You have yeah. to get, like, the shit Kim Kardashian does where it, like, bleeds. Uh-huh. She gets those microderm uh, razor <laughs> thinking, rollers. like, she puts, like, slugs on her face. Or, well, or, like, shit like that, yeah. Um, what are that, eels? <laughs> What are they? Uh, leeches. Leeches on her yeah. face. Yeah. Just sucking. No, yeah. I mean, I like, whenever I see the Kardashians, I'm like, I, there's no way that Kylie Jenner, like, uses only her face products like, exactly. on her face. Or, like, even um, in her advertisement, she didn't even fucking use it. Yeah. So I don't really believe that. Like, uh, something also that kind of just bugged me. Billy Bobby Brown said that she started her own makeup line because she wanted to learn more about beauty. <laughs> Not even because she had, like,. <laughs> Not even because she had, like, a pre-existing knowledge of beauty. She was like, this is how you learn. You start a company. You make money. Yeah. Yes. It <laughs> doesn't make any sense. That's so iconic. I know. I didn't know the concealer was, <laughs> so I made my own. Yes. Fucking, <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's that's crazy. And I think that that should not come as such a shock, you know, seeing what a real celebrity skin looks like. Yeah. It was such a shock to me. Mm-hmm. In college, when those came out, at first it was, like, an internalized misogyny thing, it made me feel better. Yeah. Right? Because it's like, of course, yeah. they are the standard. And yeah. so now their standard has been brought down to my level and it's like, yes. <laughs> but it's also like, that has helped me accept that like l- leaving the house with no makeup on is no longer a shameful thing. I was yeah. raised in the South where that is a shameful thing. Yeah. You don't go into town into town. You don't dare look like that in a Walmart. Literally. Yeah. You don't go into town, especially with your family where people know you, you're so-and-so's granddaughter and you're this, that, and the other, looking like that. And yeah. then I started to realize, this is just what I look like. <laughs> <laughs> this is just my face. No, exactly. Like, I used to, like, own, like every single day I, like, put on makeup, like, even if I was just, like, hanging out at the house. Like, now I can look like shit and I'm totally fine with that. Yeah. But it's not even you don't look like shit. That's just yeah. Your that's face. just what I look. Or like yeah, when people started TikTok off with like, I'm so sorry, I look like shit. I don't know what you look like naturally, <laughs> so I don't. I, I don't even have like something to compare it to. Yeah, thanks for telling me though. Yeah, now I know that this is you at your worst. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you scroll. Yes. Ugh. But uh, yeah, so back to this. Um, Many of the altercations to, uh, to skin improve um, involve removing blemishes through the use of features included within popular image editing programs, which are designed for just such purposes. Photo editors also alter the color of hair or remove roots or add shine. This is the part where I'm like, I'm not gonna buy, I'm not gonna buy foundation or mm. like any concealer or um, powder um, because I, oh shit. Because I, I don't know if, like, the levels on my computer are the same levels as, like... Right. Like, when they do photo editing for, like, makeup products, they have to, like, use a special, like, light for their computer to make sure it's, like, true to the color. Yeah. I'm like, I don't have that. You don't know if you have dead, pale vampire skin? Yeah. There's, like, a slight yellow tint to my screen, <laughs> so I can't buy anything. It's just all the cheese dust. Yes. <laughs> That's all the dopey hair. Yes. <laughs> But um, so additionally, the model's teeth and eyes may be made to look whiter than they are in reality. That is something that I do for my eyes um, yeah. in my teeth. Yeah. If I don't edit my face, I edit those two things. One thing about Sarah, her eyes are always bloodshot <laughs> yes, and her teeth yes, are brown. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, makeup and piercings can even be edited into pictures to look as though the model was wearing them. When, yeah. Um, I think that. I think piercings are fine. Oh, editing piercings? Slay. I think tattoos and piercings, because that doesn't really affect, like, the beauty standard. Sure. You know, like, if you're, <laughs> you're like, I Photoshop my face, and I'm like, what do you do? Just add a shit ton of tattoos. <laughs> I'm like, honestly, that's pretty cool. You look sick. Yes. Um, there is a trend now, and I wouldn't even call it a trend. It's not like people are participating in a, a trend. Uh-huh. It's just, like, I see pictures or videos on my TikTok feed or fucking whatever people talking on instagram stories yeah and they'll move a certain way and the filter will come off and i didn't even realize there was a filter on yeah it's like i that need to cover up even when just addressing the camera telling a story talking about your day makes me kind of sad you know where like i see it on tiktok and and they'll rub their face or they're you know touch their eyelash and the filter comes off and i'm like i didn't even know yeah why? But I think like platforms are like now um, like adding that like sort of like this like which filter you're using. Yeah. Even like I'm glad. one time I tried to like save an Instagram story and then like re upload it and it's still like I didn't apply the new filter to it. It just like Made showed up. with effect. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. But that's also why like Texas like banned like some like filters too. Yeah. For a hot second there. <laughs> really <laughs> fucking strange. You guys can't, can't have like fake freckles anymore because like a national security issue. Yeah. Yeah. They're lying. <laughs> Women are lying. 
<laughs> Along with fixing imperfections, yeah, um, like skin wrinkles and smoothing features, the size of the model is also manipulated by adding or subtracting visible weight. Mm -hmm. uh, reverse retouching is just as common as uh, making models skinnier, distorting the bodies of very thin models to make them appear more robust in a process called reverse retouching. Um, it's almost worse than making some, someone slimmer because the image claims you can be at an unhealthy weight but still look healthy. In reality, you can't. So you have to Photoshop it. Yeah. I imagine they do that to like a lot of like Fashion Nova models where like they make their ass look big and their tits look big and then their waist is just skinny as all just hell. like actually anatomically incorrect yeah <laughs> it's like barbie like you like if you were to make her like portions like on a real woman like she would die yes! like her like that's like where are all of her organs they're in her yeah. legs yeah <laughs> that's literally what it looks like sometimes there is no way your waist can be th that small yeah and then you're th it's literally almost triple sometimes the fucking the things i see on especially plus size yeah online shopping Oh my god. I've watched so many YouTube videos and TikToks on this. It is such a awful what people think is a step in the right direction, you know, of like, mm -hmm. well, at least there's options available. No, because the the models are Kim Kardashian. Yeah. That body type where it's like thin little waist and then the only thing plus size about her is her big fucking thunder thighs. Yeah. Which is or her ass. Yeah. And it's like that is still not reflective of what the average plus size woman looks like. Yeah. The average U.S. size, which ch goes up every year, used to be a 12. It's now a 16. Mm -hmm. It's like that's not what a fucking 16 looks like. Yeah. It is so odd. I can't get over it. Yeah. I've definitely seen like TikToks where they make fun of like models with like a more of an apple shape where mm -hmm. like they have like a bigger stomach where like a company does try to like diversify like body types. But if the girl is like trying on pants and she has a bigger stomach and no butt, then every like I will see like people who like claim to be like, you know, pro like, you know, plus size people. And then they're just like making fun of them. Like, yeah. why does she look like that? And it's like, do you understand that not everyone is big butt, big boobs, you know, plus size? Yeah. Yeah. It's still this like sexualization of the fem the female body. Imagine. Yeah. All right. So um, since 2012, Seventeen magazine announced they will no longer manipulate photos of their models. 14 year old Julia Blum petitioned that the magazine use a minimum of one unaltered photo in their spread. And then that petition received over 84,000 signatures. Wow. Yeah. I mean, Seventeen especially because it's for young women. Yeah. Mm hmm. On social media, not only are photos being manipulated by professionals for the media, but also with the rise of social media, everyone has easy access to edit photos. That's tea. It's, mm -hmm. it's a democratized process now. Countless mobile phone applications such as Facetune have been created to allow smartphone users to modify personal images. These apps allow people to edit virtually every aspect of themselves in the photo, which is true. I mean, I was editing like the size of my ears. Yeah. Nothing's wrong with the size of my ears. Really? Do they stick out? Too much, or are they too tall? No, literally <laughs> nothing. I was just in a picture one time. I was like, God damn, my ears look weird. I've never thought that before. It's you from the side, and you have no ear <laughs> on one side. Just a hole. Yes. <laughs> my ear hole. Mm -hmm. Photo manipulation has been used in advertisements for television commercials and magazines to make their products or the person look better and more appealing than how they look in reality. Period. Mm -hmm. That's wild. I used to work in advertising, and yeah, it's crazy, like, and, um... Yeah, dude, they would, instead of using fake glue for, like, milk and, like, cereal, so, like, the cereal would stay on top, uh -huh. if you ate that in real life, you'd go to the hospital. Yeah, you'd be full. <laughs> or you'd be a normal fifth grader eating so much glue. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a social and cultural implication. Did you ever eat glue growing up? No, I didn't, actually. I, I know it looks like I did. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I always, like, people kept saying, like, you could get high off of sniffing glue. And so every opportunity I got with any type of glue, I would sniff it and I never felt high. Well, what? Because it's not like Elmer's glue. Well, I mean, I don't know what type of glue they're talking about. Me either, but I know it's not Elmer's if glue. If it's like epoxy or like resin, I, then yeah. That'll, that'll do it. That'll <laughs> just get you high. That's not even high. That's just like irreversible brain damage. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a failure at huffing, dude. It's so hard. I'm looking up how do you huff glue? <laughs> yeah, because people always, um, there was like this one line in like the movie Airplane where he's like, I chose the wrong week to stop sniffing glue. I have tried <laughs> to sniff glue. Maybe my brain's just like not right. If the inhalant is in a spray can, it may be sprayed directly into the nose or mouth. Inhale. The substance, often a gas, is released, sprayed, or poured into a plastic bag or balloon. How do you... How do I sniff glue? Glue stick. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. 
so do I put a bunch of Elmer's glue in a balloon and then I smell it later? That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so bad at this. Um, All the questions are like... <laughs> what? Serious question. How do I sniff glue? How do I huff glue? One of the answers is, thank you, Cora user, for your question. How do I sniff glue? Well, if you have any in, any intelligence at all, you won't sniff glue. Sniffing the vapor from the solvent, while it can produce a high, leading to confusion, hallucinations, and delusions, which is only temporary, is unwise. Yes. <laughs> I looked up what glues get you high. Model glue and rubber cement. Okay, yeah. I got to start doing crafts again. There you go. <laughs> Sniffing glue is incorrect. What people are actually inhaling to get high is the vapor from the solvent used in the glue, which evaporates when the glue dries. So glue. I hate when people do that. Like, it's, you're not actually sniffing glue. It's like, shut up. That's what it's called. Yeah. Uh. I'm not. Okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, so the growing social and cultural implications of this. Um, All right. Huffing you know. glue. <laughs> What are the cultural implications of Huffy Glue? <laughs> How will the economy recover? Yes. Um, in her article on photography in 1977, Susan Sontag discusses the objectivity or lack thereof in photography, concluding that photographs, which fiddle with the scale of the world themselves, get reduced, blown up, cropped, retouched, doctored, and tricked out. Um, a practice widely used in the magazine industry, the use of photo manipulation on an already subjective photograph creates a constructed reality for the individual, and it becomes difficult to differentiate fact from fiction. Yeah. So I think she's like, yeah, we do edit mountains, too. Like, those get, like, but uh, when it comes to, like, subjective things, like people's, like, faces that involve, like, beauty standards, yeah. then that's when it starts to, like, really fuck with people. I wish that it didn't matter that much. I yeah. wish that we cared more about, like, doctored backgrounds and all that. Imagine, yeah. like, trying to take a pilgrimage to the Coors Light Mountain <laughs> yes. just to find out they're not real. <laughs> Are these the Coors Light Mountains? No, someone drew those. At this point in your life, you still believe in Santa because they keep editing his photo into, like, the art. Yeah. yeah. I have seen Santa drink a Coke. <laughs> He's in a magazine. <laughs> He's right here, <laughs> yes. dude. <laughs> <laughs> With the potential to alter body image, debate continues as to whether manipulated images, particularly those in magazines, contribute to self-esteem issues in both men and women. Yeah, dude. I literally, there are so many magazines from like 2004 where Jessica Simpson is literally on a stage in a black tank top, leopard belt, and then blue jeans. And everyone was calling her fat. And I was, at the time, my brain, which is so mushy and underdeveloped, was like, she is. She's yeah. literally smaller than I am right now. She was probably a size four or six. Insane. Like, the fact that Drew Barry Barrymore was considered the fat Charlie's Angels. If you look up that photo right now and you tell me, like, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. Of course, like, magazines, like, influence how we perceive the world. I don't know how I made it out of my teenage years. <laughs> <laughs> me neither. Like, I'm... there is so much working against you just existing. Yeah. That's, it's a constant uphill battle. We literally never give young, young girls a break, like, at all. No constantly just be as soon as they hit puberty it's like a wall of yeah. just like this is now what's going to be expected of you yeah. and it's just so painful and the little pockets of joy you yeah know, like if that's your favorite band yeah or just being in your room by yourself you get made fun of for that yeah you like the you're oh you don't have any friends you're the it's just like i i luckily feel like i learned at an early age i think being a military brat kind of uh -huh. helped how to fit into a crowd, what I needed to say, yeah. you know, how I needed to present myself so people would like me immediately. It's like a lot of that was learned behavior. What about the people who don't get, who aren't forced to develop that? Yeah. You know, it's like you just, it's exactly that. It's the world against you. We're yeah. just trying to live. Sucks. Dude, actually, yeah, I think about that all the time. Being a military brat, like, really made me adaptable. Like, yeah. to talk to literally anyone because, like, my friends are, because, I started to get on social media, like, um, right in the middle of, like, high school, where I, like, moved to, like, um, I guess already in Virginia, but, like, a majority of, like, my of my other high school, my middle schools, my elementary schools, all my friends, if I had them, they were gone as soon as, like, yeah. I moved. Yeah. So you, like, had to make new friends or else you just, like, never made friends there. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, You're the weird new kid who doesn't talk. Yeah. If you want to be, if you want to make more friends, become a military brat. Yeah. Ask your dad to enlist. <laughs> yes. And um, go from there. Good luck. <laughs> Or just start, like, yeah, moving a lot. Wait, what were we talking about now? I would like to talk about Photoshop as a verb. Okay, yeah. The terms Photoshop, Photoshopped, and Photoshopping, derived from Adobe Photoshop, are ubiquitous and widely used colloquially and academically when referencing image editing software as it relates to digital... Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Everyone knows what Photoshop means. Yeah. The term commonly refers to... Blah, 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 exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, in popular culture, the term photoshopping is sometimes associated with montages in the form of visual jokes, such as those published on... What is this? On Farkin and Mad... I guess, but I think that what we skip is actually important. Trademark owner Adobe object to what they refer to as the misused trademark software name and consider an infringement on their trademark to use terms such as Photoshop, Photoshopping, as a noun or verb in possessive form or as a slang to term to prevent general, gener genericization or genericide of the company's trademark. And I think that, like, yeah. I think since there's a negative association with Photoshopping, that that's why they don't, especially don't want that to happen. Like, I yeah. imagine where, like, other companies, like, can I, can you give me a Kleenex? Like, it's literally yeah. just, like, a, a tissue. Yeah. Like, since it doesn't have, like, a negative connotation, I don't think Kleenex really, like, you cares. You shouldn't have given the children the power yeah. to alter photos. It's your own damn fault. But, yeah. Um, Photoshop I is to blame. Photoshop is to blame. Let's give some examples of the effects of beauty filters. Um, we did touch on some, but we're going to talk about if we use them. You know, the yeah. smoothing skin texture. Do you use that? Well, I don't edit my photos anymore at yeah. all. Even, um, like, I get red carpet photos back and all that, and I just, I'm like, well, this is how I fucking look. Yeah. And I think that's easier for me now because we exist in the age of relatability. Yeah. This is how I look. Like, if I'm, if I change that or alter that in any way... I am somehow being um, untrue yeah. and authentic, and that undermines my brand. Yeah, it would also be like cringe if like someone could zoom in on your like red carpet photo and yeah. they can tell that you like warped like yeah. your waist or something. Yeah, I sucked <laughs> in my jaw. <laughs> but you thought we wouldn't notice. Yeah, yeah. Um, and people know what I look like. I yeah. am a public figure. Yeah. This isn't like a hundred of my high school friends liking my Instagram picture, mm -hmm. you know, and just like, damn, she looks good because mm -hmm. I haven't talked to them in ten years. That's just like. I don't feel the need to do that anymore, but yes, yeah, I, I definitely used to. And I used to do it for the purpose of dating apps. Yeah. I would literally have my friends take a picture of me or take a picture of myself with my friend, whatever, and be like, this is great for Tinder. Uh huh. That's wild. Yeah. Yeah. All right, what about you? <laughs> um, I definitely like, if I'm like in the sun, I'm definitely going to smooth out some texture. Just because I'm getting older and you can see every like, but I mean, I'll still leave a lot of texture, just not as much, mm. you know, I, but I've still pretty much look the same. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't do anything like super crazy. I do minimize fine lines and blemishes though. Like if I have a zit, I'll just boop, like yeah. that's gone. Yeah. I will do that. And then erasing under eye bags. Yeah, dude, when we were, I had, I used to have really bad under eye bags because I couldn't sleep. And like um, people, when we made our like our moving vlog from my old house to our oh, new. Dude, they were so ruthless towards you. They were so horrible. Like yeah. they looked like I got like punched in the face and everyone thought it was funny. And I was like, no, I just haven't been sleeping, you guys. And I didn't even notice. Yeah. Like they pointed that out and I was like, that's <laughs> fucking wild. It's the internet creating like a new insecurity like yes. every single day. Yeah. Ooh, um. What? Have you seen how do you feel about this on TikTok? Uh, it's a trend to create under eye bags. Really? It's makeup. It's tired makeup. They literally put like red and purple and black shadow and like yeah. make it. I saw that and I was like, all the comments were like, so the bags I've been teased about for yeah. 15 years are in style? Fuck off. All yeah. these angry middle aged moms. <laughs> I just think like, I, I mean, I don't really care. Like, I, I just, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. It's whatever, but um, erasing nasolabial lines, laugh lines. My nasolabia. I'll show you a nasolabia. <laughs> My face labia. <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess the mouth is the pussy of the face. Um, you've always said that. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Well, lab labial means lip. Really? Yeah. Oh. Labia. So I could say my labias? Yeah. Um, from my face? Your lip? facial labia. <laughs> so if I said kiss my labias. <laughs> Kiss my full frontal facial labia. <laughs> yes. um, I don't really get rid of like smile lines. I imagine when I start to have really bad wrinkles, I'll do something about that. I'm about to get Botox. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get Botox for this furrowed brow right here. I'm going to get it too. Yeah. No, we both got it. <laughs> yes. um, Sometimes I walk by your room and I see you on your bed like this. Because that's how you focus. That is how I focus. I literally smile like this. Yeah. And I squint. And I've like literally gone to the optometrist and they're like, you don't have bad vision you that's just your face when you're <laughs> focused i'm like holy shit like when i'm reading a book and it describes someone as having their face all screwed up in focus that's literally what you do screwed up screwed up <laughs> not screwed up like you look fucked mangled up, yes. but just like someone did this yes yeah <laughs> mangled. Yes. <laughs> um there's also application of virtual makeup such as lipstick or eyeshadow never done that i have 
really? Yeah. <laughs> you put like a blue eyelid on and like red lipstick. Yeah. <laughs> and the lipstick is like clearly half an inch from your lips yeah i'm like i literally would take pictures and be like i'll just put it on and post yeah post? Yes. i'm in my childhood bedroom yes. what are you talking about post there's also slimming on the face and erasing of double chins i've done that I've done that too enlarging the eyes never done that never done that either um whitening teeth and narrowing yep. the nose yeah yep. increasing the fullness of the lips i've never done that i like my lips I've never done it because it just looks fucked up. Yeah. Or if I'm smiling, it just makes my teeth look bigger. Yes. It's fucking dumb. How come this is not an option to make your teeth bigger? <laughs> <laughs> to make your armpit fat bigger and your teeth bigger. <laughs> Forehead taller. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hair more thin. I am a proponent of bringing back plucking the hair from your forehead. What? like Like a middle-aged, um, from the middle ages, women used to do that. Because a high forehead meant um, intelligence and wealth. Oh. I would assume that they didn't like smart women. Hence the Salem well, Witch Trials. Fair. <laughs> yes. Well, this was like 1400s. Yeah. Basilians. And women's intelligence cycles in and popularity. Right, yeah. right. It was a trend back Sometimes then. Sometimes you want to be smart and not. Yeah. Well, they yeah. want smart women, not fucking witches. Yes. <laughs> You're a fucking witch. <laughs> Do you know a witch was just a woman who could read? <laughs> 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 a sentient woman yes. which on oh uh so there's ex- they talk about um the MITT tech review talks about like the accessibility and the normality of filters um the most widespread use of augmented reality isn't in gaming it's in face filters on social media yeah yeah dude it's actually crazy to me how advanced tiktok is with its green screen yeah like the fact that like if I mean, you need a green screen to like film like something behind you, but on TikTok, it just takes your face. Yeah, and it's pretty decent. Yeah, that's crazy to me. Yeah, and other apps have not been able to replicate it. Yeah, I try to use the fucking Instagram one. Uh-huh. Yeah, I tried to. Um, I was trying to take a photo as a minion on Instagram <laughs> story the other day, and I had a ball gag in my mouth, and it kept putting it kept putting yellow over my ball gag, and I'm yeah. like, dude, I'm trying to keep it in the photo. Well, clearly, You're, it's a ball gag. Yeah, so it was it was like not working, and then eventually I got it. Don't you hate when Instagram impedes your creative process? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, so, you know, today more and more young people, especially teenage girls, are using filters that beautify their appearance and promise to deliver model-esque looks by sharpening, shrinking, enhancing, and recoloring their faces and bodies. I think this has been going on forever. You yeah. Know? It will continue to go on. The face filters have become commonplace across social media, are perhaps the most widespread use. Yeah, augmented reality, all this sort of thing. Um, there is a societal impact, which we've been touching on like ever since we started talking. Mm-hmm. But this, this is uh, Stanley's opinion. Well, this is the opinion article by Newport Institute. Weird. They sell cigarettes and opinion pieces? <laughs> <laughs> the people selling cigarettes have the most to say about the yeah. beauty standard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, it's a natural impulse to want to present ourselves in the best light. Yeah, I think that's true. So why doesn't that extend to men? Because men don't have, like, men can age. Literally, like, men can get wrinkles. And what is that fucking movie trailer where um, poster where they let all the old actors um, age? Um, Year old virgin. Age. But one girl is photoshopped. What is that fucking one? Um, Ocean's Eleven. No, 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 no. Um, what is the, okay, so there's this, I need to actually look this up or it's going to kill me. Movie poster. Where older actors didn't get Photoshop. Do you remember one of the actors? No. Is it George Clooney? But girl is Photoshopped. I've uh, seen Ocean's Eleven so many times, dude. No, it's one where all of the older guys in this movie poster, like none of them got their wrinkles edited out. They had like gray hair. And then like the leading actress who was about the same age as all these guys, like she, her face was just Photoshopped to shit. Is it recent? Yes. Is it Mission Impossible? It might be. Look up Mission Impossible, the most recent one. Mission Impossible poster. Uh, most likely. Because um, I've seen, well, as we all know, I've seen Elvis in theaters many times. Yes. As well as Top Gun in theater three times. Okay. And before both of those movies, they play the Mission Impossible trailer. I've seen that trailer so many fucking times. Yeah. All the men, like, look their age. Yeah. Like what you're saying. There's a woman in it. I forget her fucking name. But I remember watching the trailer and being like, she looks, n- like... Not real. 
the only thing about her is she's got like a, some smile lines. Yeah. Everything else is so smooth. And I was yeah. like, that's not, if you want her to be believable as like a 50 year old woman. Yeah. Playing alongside Tom Cruise. <laughs> what? <laughs> yes. Just crazy. It really is crazy. Um, the further our filtered selfies get from how we look, the worse we feel about ourselves. And while it's slowly becoming more acceptable to talk about not being okay on social media, yeah, you're still it's still supposed to look great while not being okay. Right, right. And that's again like if the weirder you are, the if if you're super weird and you're really hot, you can be as weird as fucking possible. Right. They're like be yeah. unwell, but at least just be nice to look at. Mm -hmm. Make it digestible for us. Yes, this is where I think my internalized misogyny may pop out a little bit. Mm. Sometimes you'll listen to some female comedians who are hot. And I'm saying as someone who pursues comedy professionally, and you listen to their jokes, and you're like, would this land if they were unattractive? No. And so I, I don't even think that's internalized misogyny. It's like I, if I were to write this down and read it as is, like would it be as funny, you know? I think, um, and then I'm just going to blatantly say I don't think a lot of men are funny. Um, oh, yeah. But, yeah, that's the thing that I'm noticing where, like, a lot of professional female comedians, yes, yes. I always trust an average looking male comedian and female comedian above anything else. Yeah. Because if you're hot and funny, what's wrong with you? I trust an average looking person in a lot of different arenas. Yeah. So we talk about pretty privilege being a privilege, but it also could be a disadvantage at some point as well. It's pretty privilege for things that don't matter. Yeah. Access to a club, yeah. free drinks, da da da. But for the shit that does matter, average people are a lot more skilled because you have to develop skills. Yeah. I would take being average and talented any day mm -hmm. over just a pretty face <laughs> because people get disenchanted with that. Yeah. And what happens when, it, I mean, we talked about this before, for anyone, what happens when that beauty fades Yeah, and you're left with nothing? Oh, I used to be. You didn't develop any admirable skills or talent or personality because you weren't forced to. Yeah. I just have zero respect. Hot people are cool, but when I see, <laughs> I'm telling you, when I see a hot male comedian yeah. on my page, I do that. I close my eyes and I listen. Yeah. And I'm like, God, that was so bad. Mm -hmm. That was bad. Yeah. Like you just, uh, it's it's crazy how like you're, how you, yeah. Like, and I feel like that for a lot of musicians too. Yeah. If you're, if you're super hot and I'm, I'm like, oh, I know that this is objectively bad. Why am I even, I mean, yeah, because hotness goes like so far. God damn. We're, we're like so intoxicated by it. We're like we hate it, but we're also victims to it. Oh, yes. definitely. Um, a 2021 study by uh, City University of London research explored the negative effects of filters on mental health. Participants, including 175 young women and non-binary people ages 18 to 30, with the majority being 20 and 21. That makes me sad that they, by non-binary, they probably mean um, AFAB, um, which means they probably perceive AFAB people as women. But I mean, I guess AFAB people are still are affected, affected by beauty standards, even though they're not women. Okay, what so a uh, sign female at birth. Ah. Yes. Uh, one of the most striking findings with that was that 90 percent of the young women in the study reported using filters or editing their photos. The other 10 percent liars. Yeah. Mm hmm. The study also found answers to the question, what's the filter everyone uses the most? The five most common filters are, you know, even out skin tone, brightening skin, whitening teeth, bronze teeth and take off weight. Um, I just. Oh my god, this. we've been talking for 52 minutes. Yeah. Holy shit. I've, this is not real. It's something about the heat in this room. Dude, wait. That literally, like, we were like, we've been talking for 12 minutes and now we're like, it's sped up. <laughs> what were we talking about for so long? <laughs> Face down. Holy shit. Do we want to just skip to body dysmorphia? <laughs> <laughs> All right, cut the horse shit. Yeah. Let's talk about body dysmorphia. Dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's do it. Body dysmorphia and social media filters. Would you like to? Yeah, everybody thinks they've got body dysmorphia. That's the, yeah. that's the jumping off point. Another link between filters and mental health is the negative impact on body image. Research shows that young adults who frequently use filters on social media often have increased feelings of dissatisfaction with their actual face and body. Which, body dysmorphia does not mean dissatisfaction with your body. Yeah. It means that you cannot comprehend what you actually look like yeah and it is a form of like cognitive dissonance of what you see in the mirror mm -hmm. you actually can't understand it yeah like it's it's, it's a disconnect yeah so i don't i don't think i have body dysmorphia the only thing i like I, I said is like i don't know what my skin looks like but i i know what my body shape looks like 
Well, that's one of those things where it's like, am I an ashy blonde or a dirty blonde? Yeah. It's like it changes it's in the light. It's not my yeah, it's not, it's not. It's my eyesight. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's your laptop screen. <laughs> dysmorphia, also called body dysmorphic disorder, is a mental health condition in which the person is obsessed with the perceived flaws in their face or body. I don't know if that's correct. Body dysmorphia definition. Mission Impossible Fallout. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to find that poster. <sighs> The flaw may be minor or imagined, but the person may spend hours a day trying to fix it. The person may try many cosmetic procedures or exercise to excess. People with this disorder may frequently examine their appearance in a mirror, constantly compare their appearance to that of others, and avoid social situations or photos. What's the term I'm thinking of then? Body dysmorphia. Where you like actually don't know what you look like. Um, condition. <laughs> yeah. Condition where your body produces body alcohol. Dys body <laughs> dysmorphic disorder. Oh yeah, dude. Some people, oh. yeah, can produce like alcohol like by themselves. Auto brewery syndrome. What the fuck is that? Think it's like people eat a lot of bread. Oh, they just make beer. I know. Their piss is beer. Yeah, dude. <laughs> what? There's, dude. Did you know that your pee comes from your blood? There's pee in our blood right yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. We have oh. pee in our blood. You cut yourself and it's like, did someone fucking piss themselves? <laughs> <laughs> Gross! Wait. Body dysmorphic disorder is a condition where you can't stop thinking about one or more perceived defects or flaws in your appearance. Oh. You guys gotta back me up here. There are two types of body dysmorphia. Um, bo muscle dysmorphia and BDD by proxy. Wait, what is BDD by proxy? You have body, body dysmorph dysmorphic disorder. This is where I think your body looks different than what it <laughs> is. <laughs> God, you look fucked up. <laughs> yeah, I could have sworn. Um, I think muscle dysmorphia has to do with like orthorexia, where the most of the fellas deal with, and they're just completely in denial about. Yeah. Muscle dysmorphia. Depersonalization, derealization disorder. What is that? Feelings of depersonalization and derealization can be very disturbing and may feel like you're living in a dream. You thought you had body dysmorphia. Turns out you're just dissociating. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out I'm living in a dream. <laughs> yes. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Feeling that you're observing yourself from outside of your body, or you have a sense that things around you aren't real, or yeah. both. Do you ever feel like that? I hate that. You yeah, feel like I do. things aren't real? Yes. I feel like, um, I sometimes I feel like I'm playing a game. Yeah. Like I'm in a game of life. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, I can, I can lose. I can just start over. Yeah. Not how it works, actually. That's cra I think my craziest thing that I think about in life is, like, if someone, I don't see someone for, like, a year, I just assume they're dead, and I'm totally fine with that. Like, I don't know why, but, like, in my brain, like, when I see them again, or, like, they, or, like, an actor comes on screen, I haven't seen them, I was like, I just always assume that they were dead. Why do you, why? It's the object permanence. I really have horrible object permanence. Yeah, you do. Yeah, I'm like a baby. I've got, like, 13 things of feta cheese in the fridge. Yeah, you dude. You forget that we have them. Because I keep forgetting that it's there. I have to, like, make a list of, like, what's in the fridge or else I won't yeah. know what's in the fridge. Kalmata olives, your yogurt. We have so... Feta cheese. But the yogurt I eat every day. The olives, I keep buying jars of olives. And pickles. And pickles. Wait, but I thought you were eating the pickles. Nope. Oh, they're just going <laughs> in the back of the fridge. They're just being shoved <laughs> to the back. Oh, that's where they are. Yeah. Um, yes, uh, but also back to dysmorphia. Um, Hence, young people with filter dysmorphia experience a sense of disconnection between how they look and the edited images they share with the world. Yeah. A uh, kind of self-objectification. -object uh, that may be why people who use photo, photo editing apps regularly are also more likely to consider having cosmetic surgery. Well, yeah, because it's like you need to go touch grass. Yeah. You wanna... There is such, we always say this, there's such validity in touching grass. They're re going outside. The reason why like s like seasonal depression is such a huge thing is because the sun goes away and it gets cold. Yeah. So get out of your AC department and go lay out in the hot Texas sun. Yeah. He's begging. <laughs> yeah. Please. Um, I don't, I'm not done talking about auto brewery syndrome. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's also called gut fermentation syndrome. <laughs> Wait, How do you know about this? Because I there was like this one girl who kept getting drunk, like <laughs> just by herself. Okay, um, but yeah, so sugar enter it starts fermenting in the yeast in your stomach, and then it creates like ethanol alcohol. That is crazy. It creates. I thought ethanol is what you put in your car. <laughs> I thought ethanol is what you used to take off your nail polish. <laughs> Wait, no, that is a type of alcohol. <gasps> uh, I wonder how much nail polish remover I would have to drink before I got drunk. Or until you died. Yeah. What would happen first? I think you would die. Oh. Oh. That sucks. But yeah, so basically you can get your like self like drunk off of eating sugar and bread. 
That is wild. <laughs> so Holy sobriety shit. must be a pain in the ass if you have this. I'm um, sorry. Oh, no. I'm just thinking that's. Yeah. yeah. That must be a pain in the ass. It'd be like if my stomach like manufactured glue fumes and I could get high by just like eating glue. <laughs> There's a cannabis farm in your gut. <laughs> yes. You chewing on the weed nuggets? Yes. <laughs> Ew. Is auto brewery syndrome curable? <laughs> I would say like that's the best syndrome to have. Actually, you can't probably drive. not. Oh yeah, you can't drive. Doctors can treat auto brewery syndrome with antifungals and in some case antibiotics. Uh huh. Antifungals can reduce the amount of fungus in the gut. <laughs> got a fungal gut oh my god that is crazy though that is let's hey, go anybody with uh beer beer belly beer out gut? there you guys what do you guys know about fungal beer gut <laughs> yes. um so there's also uh, do you want to touch on face app it's like a similar app that you can like edit your face in like facetune it was launched in january 2017 and then you know february uh, on for android and there are multiple options to manipulate the photo. So it's just like another photo editing app, you know, smile, hair color, pit. Was this the one that you could... Oh, no, that was face and hole. What? Edit a hole in your face? No, face and <laughs> hole was famous pictures. Or not famous pictures, but like pictures of celebrities with people. Oh. And they would put a hole in the face of the person next to the celebrity and you could put your own face in it. Oh, no. I spent hours on face and hole. Louis Tomlinson, Harry Styles, yeah. all of 1D is like me and 1D. Yeah. Me and fucking, um, um, who do I used to be obsessed with? <laughs> it's a long list. It's a long list, but in that age... Oh fuck yeah! What was his name? Um, um, Johnny Coppola back on board. Who's that actor? Jake T. Austin, dude. Oh shit! Do you Shen. remember Jake T. Austin? Yeah. Wait, Jake. Love T. Jake T. Austin. You put my face in hole with him. <laughs> I'll show you a face in hole. He is twenty seven years old. Yeah. Oh my god. So are you? Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh shit. Oh my god. I'm late. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there was a precursor to all these face apps um, on March 31st, 2008. There's a web app called In 20 Years was launched, which takes user submitted photographs and applies a filter to make the subject look significantly older. I used to like those. I've never done. Well, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've done like, like the Snapchat or like that thing <laughs> where like it has like you as a man, you as an old person, yeah. you as a baby. And so then, good. Yeah. <laughs> then, Me and my dad used to do uh, the bald, bald one. Yeah, Before yeah. the bald filter came out. Yeah. We used to do the one that gives you the Dr. Phil hair. <laughs> but on me. Like the fryer? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pretty good. All right, guys. So now we want to <laughs> show you some examples of um, some memes, post-ironic memes, late stage Facetune, all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so although AR filters <laughs> like are late new. Late stage uh, Facetune sounds like third trimester. <laughs> like third sorry. trimester Facetune. Yes. Were you like um, face tune the baby in the MRI picture? <laughs> Sucking its jaw. <laughs> Eyelashes. <laughs> Yassifying your embryo. <laughs> Although AR filters are new in internet time, they are ancient. And this discussion doesn't seem new, surprising, or groundbreaking. And I doubt this will create a basis for regulation. Due to many people growing up with these filters accessible to them, becoming more of a norm within how the internet is used, there's been memes and funny scenarios rooted within face tuning and photo alteration. So everyone knows the yassifying <laughs> things. Oh, hold on. For um, those of you who don't know what yassifying is, so yassifying is a slang term to like, yes, you know, like someone is like, really cute or like pretty or like their outfit is like incredible and then so yassifying is where like you take the mom from like hereditary like hereditary when she's screaming and you like put some makeup on her while she's having like one of the darkest moments of in the movie <laughs> yeah, <it is>. stupid <laughs> and then there's a picture of um with Yoda, well, they're like face tuned his face and like completely got completely of... devoid of all wrinkles and, <laughs> and hair. Yes. Oh my god! They even added like gloss to his eyelids and lips. That's good. That is really funny. Um, oh, we got a BuzzFeed post. I love BuzzFeed. This is a famous one. Steve Harvey completely smoothed him. Mm -hmm. Face tuned and, him. Yossified Steve Harvey. Like there are no lines on his face. Not you know, like that one. meme where someone was like, "You look like you're easy to draw." <laughs> Like Steve Harvey now has like he looks like he's easy to draw. Oh my God. There's no, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I've never heard that. I personally love when they like when people are on TikTok and they use like a face filter on a video and they film like a movie where it's like World War Two, yeah. like they're in the trenches and now yeah. this guy's like a red lip and like a red lip and a Marilyn Monroe mole. Yeah, <laughs> it's so good. I love that. I like the crying ones. The crying ones. The crying filter. Or they'll put. <laughs> <laughs> There's another example that we're looking at. Basically, this woman has face tuned herself to shit where she has no nose. That is so scary. She looks like fucking Momo. <laughs> yeah, and like Casper the Friendly Ghost. The thing is, is like, that's so sad. I think what's crazy to me also is that like when you edit your face so much that you have no pores, basically no nose, like no wrinkles. Yeah. Do you think that people will believe that? Yes. Because well, I mean, I don't, I don't think anyone's ever seen this photo and been like, oh my god, she's beautiful. You're telling me a middle-aged man wouldn't comment on this and be like, sexy. A middle-aged man would fucking hump a broken fire hydrant. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they believe it. I think they just want to get laid, yeah. and they see that this woman has some sort of self-esteem issue, so they prey on her. Slay. Yeah, and then there's this one of who is this? Liam Payne. Liam Payne. It's really funny when they yassify a, a man because. Yeah. Good. Men don't wear makeup. Yeah, completely took away his nose mm -hmm. and um, gave him oo woo eyes. Oh, yeah. So we just have a lot of examples for everyone listening on the road. Uh, close your eyes. Close your eyes and imagine. And picture... <laughs> a dog <laughs> with lip injections and human eyes and a button nose. Dude, dogs with human eyes freak me out. Yeah, I get tagged in those a lot. Really? People say they look like me. You're a, a human with dog eyes? No, the dogs look like they have my eyes. <laughs> There's something. Hold on. I'll just put it up on the screen and you tell me. You know what? Like, I mean, I know that Scooby-Doo is not, like, based in reality. But you know that Wait, movie? <laughs> when they go to, like, that, um, like, spooky island and Scooby is dressed up as grandma. How stupid is everyone on the plane that <laughs> this woman is basically deformed? Yeah. That she has, like, a dog snout. But you just want to ask questions. <laughs> yes. They say this looks like me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's a dog with human eyes that looks like Britney. See, but, like, why? I would kill that with a hammer. <laughs> Dude, there's this tweet that was, like, so fucking good. It's like, if I ever met E.T., best believe me and my friends would kill it with a hammer. Yeah. Dude, I think about that all the time. There are so many movies, like, characters I would, I would probably, like, kill. I don't know why that's my first instinct. To just mash it? Yes, yes. That is a wild instinct. Like, if E.T., like, came out of my closet, I wouldn't be like, aw, I'd, like, literally, like, choke it with, like, a fucking rope. If E.T. came out of my closet, I would run screaming. I would throw myself out of the window. Yes. Look at, look at E.T., dude. E.T. is disgusting looking. E.T. is actually, like, hard to look at. <laughs> yes. Dude, holy shit. You're supposed to emotionally connect with this, but it would scare me shitless. Where is he? Dude, look and like... Look at E.T. I know. I'm look, look at his little fucking gut. <laughs> <laughs> Ew! Body shaming E.T. <laughs> Dude, there's so many wrinkles. Ew, no, but it's, yeah, I don't, if he came out of my closet and his, like, neck can extend. Yeah. Oh, dude, I'd get some, like, garden trimmers and, like, cut its head off. But imagine it starts running at you. Oh, my God. It runs at you full force with that real fucking voice. E.T. phone. Oh. I, I guess I would. Yeah. I would grab something and just, what? <laughs> yes. That's wild. Dude, in, like, literally any alien movie where, like, they're trying to survive, I would immediately kill myself. Yeah. If aliens came out of the sky and were like, we want to talk to your president, I'm like, I don't care. I'm going to buy a gun and shoot myself in the head. <laughs> there's no way I want to see this through. Like, dude, I there's that prompt on, like, Bumble where it's like, what are you doing during, like, a zombie ap apocalypse? I'm killing myself. I'm dead. Dude, in a, in a couple weeks, once everyone has gone crazy and I've, like, there's no refrigerator for, like, cheese. Oh, yeah. Count me out. I can't eat cheese or salami. <laughs> I'm going to kill you myself. You run out of lactate. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's just awful. The last few days, you just having liquid diarrhea. Yeah, you ran out of lactate. Dude, why would I want to try to survive an apocalypse? I think that I would. I see myself as trying to take charge, but I would get so annoyed and frustrated. I'd be like, "Well, someone else fucking do it." Yeah, and dude. then I would just complain the whole time. Dude, and like we think about, I saw how like people acted during the pandemic. Yeah, if there's a zombie like virus. Oh, we're all dead. We're dead. We're literally like, uh, people are like, you, you know, if you just expose yourself, like you won't catch it. And then they immediately die. And there's another zombie. Yeah. <laughs> Anti-maskers. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you just described half of America. Yes. 
Um, yeah, this is this is wild. E.T. is an actually crazy movie. The fact that these kids like loved him. Wait, movie? Uh, kids movies from the eighties. What was that other one with the cy- cyclops? Um, you know what I'm talking about? We bought a zoo. The Goonies. The Goonies. Oh yeah. Goonies monster. I hate any movie that centers around children. Dude, he scared the fuck out of me as a kid. Oh yeah. Ew. <laughs> he scared the shit out of me. Oh. I don't like any movies about children. Like Matilda, don't like it. Um, I don't like what's that one where they all play baseball and the dog swallows the ball? Backyardigans? Benchwarmers? <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> movies a movie where big dog swallows ball. The Sandlot. I fucking hate those movies. Oh, the Adam Sandler lot. Also hate the movies Toy Story, like Toy Story movies. Why do you hate Toy Story? It's just so, we get it. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know why, I don't know why it makes, it pisses me off so much. (laughs) You watching Toy Story the first time being like, ugh, we know what happened. I'm like, eight, this is so contrived. (laughs) (laughs) Mom, get my juice box, we're leaving. (laughs) Ask for a refund on these tickets. I don't know, there's something about those movies where like, I I just, it makes me upset. I guess I... Kind of understand. Mm-hmm. And E.T. is just gross. E.T. is just hard to look at. But the societal implications of E.T. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. I think we've pretty much already, like, said, you know, it's bad for everyone's mental health. Like, yeah. dude, it definitely affects a lot of, like, young women's mental health. Yeah, I would go as far as to say Faisun has done nothing but harm. Yeah. Like, even... Because what are you trying to correct? That's mm-hmm. how people look. Yeah. Like, this is how people look. Humans have texture. They have skin that is supposed to stretch and adapt and age. And yeah. You know what I mean? Like, why? It's this weird obsession with, like, children and being juvenile and looking juvenile. Yeah. That is at the core of all of this. Mm-hmm. We all want to look younger and smoother and hairless like little fucking children. Yeah. And it's strange. Yeah. That's all I have to say. I just want my body color to be this one color. Unilateral. Yes. I want my body color to be opaque. Right. That's but that's the yeah. Uh, but I understand. Yeah, it's just like affecting like people's like mental health because you think you're supposed to look a certain way or like everyone looks like this. Also, but also it's on the other side, it kind of does bug me. When I I absolutely hate when models come online and they're like, I don't look like that in real life. They're pointing to their photo. I'm like, but you're it's you okay. You don't look exactly like that. But you do look like that, yeah. you know, like, uh, guys, I'm not really a triple zero. I'm actually a double zero. It's like, oh, thank God. That really, like, puts some, like, I, you know, eases my soul. Yeah. I yeah. see myself in Emily Regged, yes, Gauss. Yeah. Or, like, when uh, models, like, hunch over, they're like, sometimes I get a stomach roll. Dude, I can't even, that's going to make me actually ill. Yeah. Thinking about... Everyone has no. You don't. Wait, you're so, forcing it. But this is the forced relatability, like yes! that we were talking about. Like, so I understand when models are like, you know, they did edit my face and like that sort of thing. But when they try to go above and beyond and be like, I don't look like that. Like sometimes I hunch over and my posture's not I've great. I got this big zit. Yeah, you're basically being Shane Dawson when it comes to money. Yeah. Like stop. Like you just say that that's not how you look, but you don't have to like contort yourself to look like you know a mangled E.T. Yeah. <laughs> For us to be like, okay, yeah, we get <gasps> it. <laughs> I forgot he was up there. Emily Ratajkowski? Yeah, oh my God. <laughs> it's this weird thing of like, they almost subconsciously recognize that being rich, famous, and attractive isn't cool. I think they consciously recognize that. Like, think about like, if you ask a rich person if they were rich growing up, they're like, we were comfortable. <laughs> It's like, yeah, yeah. if you ever, it's like the same as when men are like, I'm a centrist on a dating app. They're a conservative. Yeah. Like, it's just like, you're trying to like avoid that. Like, rich people know that like, if you ever described your upbringing as comfortable, you have multiple houses. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's that af- you're afraid to be at the top. Yeah. And it's like, that's all anyone wants. Wait, imagine like, you ask someone like, poor, like, were you rich growing up? We were uncomfortable. Yeah, Actually, if, I mean, but that would be a weird response. You'd be like, no, we weren't. Well, yeah. Yeah. Strange. It'd be a strange way to say that. <laughs> Were you, how was your childhood? Bad. Uncom- <laughs> but uncomfortable, uncomfortable is so specific. Yeah. <laughs> Loud. Loud. <laughs> Smelly. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's a weird trend that we're seeing in celebrities. And the pandemic really, really exacerbated the wealth gap. Yeah. When Kim Kardashian rented an entire island 
that she could take her family to so they could be maskless during the pandemic. I have never seen people so enraged online. Kylie Jenner takes fucking a private jet from one end of L.A. to long. another side of L.A. And they, it, like, releases, like, a couple tons of, like, pollution into the atmosphere every yep. single time. Like, her, like, weekly flights, w uh, like, create more pollution than me, like, flying to, like, across the U.S. once a year. Yeah. Well, obviously, yeah. But... it's It's literally... People no longer have the same tolerance or craving for that type of content and respect for those type of people. Yeah. You know, like you are living at a standard that most people will not even come like see in their yeah. lifetimes. And it's like you have so much excess and you have the world at your fingertips that it's honestly kind of disgusting mm -hmm. when we saw the rate that people were dying and we couldn't visit our families and, you know, all of that during the pandemic, it was just a different level of suffering yeah. that this country hasn't seen in a long time on such a unilateral way, yeah. like a, a standard. And so I think it's strange how that relates to beauty standards and how that relates to relatability online and all that, you know, where yeah. it's like people don't want to see pretty rich people, yeah. pretty rich, skinny people. We don't want to see that anymore until it comes back around yeah. and it's popular again. Oh, God. It's just a vicious cycle. It is. It's gross. It's like menstruation. Yeah. <laughs> There's, like, that's the yeah. only cycle thing I knew of. <laughs> that in America's Next Top Model. Oh, yeah. Have you seen it? Well, Tyra Banks is annoying as fuck. Yeah, Tyra Banks. Uh -uh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Uh, face tune bad. Face tune bad. Boom. T TikTok. Mm. Good. TikTok good. <laughs> All okay. right, but thank you guys so much for listening uh, to this week's episode of Violating, Violating Community, Community Guidelines. It's hot as fuck in this room. Make sure to like, subscribe, follow us, uh, rate us five stars on Apple Podcasts, and iTunes, on Yelp. on Yelp too. Yeah, give <laughs> us a good um, open res review. Mm -hmm. They said if we get five stars, we get an AC in here. <laughs> please, <laughs> yes. please There's, I'm like, we make a joke that we have swamp ass. I have swamp ass right now. And I'm, I'm afraid to stand up. <laughs> I'm white for normal reasons. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. Um, okay, yes. But they're fixing the AC. I don't want to, like, bother these guys too much. But, yes, thank you guys so much for listening. Love you guys. Goodbye. Bye.